Greetings Watercolor Class. I'm going to visit with you here about the first two assignments. Uh, but before I talk about these texture studies, I want to say a word about the textbook that is listed for this class. Uh, the Encyclopedia of Watercolor Techniques, or the more recent editions of it, say the new Encyclopedia of Watercolor Techniques. Actually, uh, in the last few semesters, we found that book hard to find or out of print, but readily available uh, if you go on EB, uh, eBay I'm sorry, or Amazon.com. Uh, you can likely find a copy of it. It's not a required book, but it is a very good resource book for you. Um, I will try to have a copy available in the classroom that you can thumb through, but um, it's, it's just a good resource book, and here are the reasons why. Uh, of course, you're not going to be able to see much thumbing through it, but it has almost every style approach to watercolor you can imagine in the examples. It has examples of, of uh, the basic watercolor techniques. Um, flat washes, graded washes, variegated washes, <clears throat> wet on dry, wet and wet, blending techniques, uh, dealing with hard edges, glazing, which is so important with watercolor, back runs and uh, what the author calls blossoms. I like to call it oozles where clear water is dropped into the page. Uh, anyway, there's just a whole host. Uh, here's lifting out, uh, spraying with water. And, and you can find lists like this on the internet, a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, there's just a lot of information out there. But you could use that as a basic resource for looking at examples of some of different traditional techniques with watercolor. And as I also began to, to say, there's there, um, it, it's just every style from photorealistic uh, to very expressionistic or impressionistic, I should say, uh, even a little bit of non-objective work. So it's, it's a good resource. I do not like to point you in any one direction <clears throat> that presumes uh, a particular style. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's a good resource book and it does list uh, the major techniques I want you to use on this first assignment. So here's what you're going to do. <clears throat> you're going to divide up the front and back of a half sheet of paper, probably 140 pound cold press paper with rectangles simply by using masking tape or uh, Scotch magic tape. Probably not drafting tape. Uh, some art tapes don't stick real well. And I should say this, uh, when you're putting a tape down it is very important uh, when you're laying down your tape that you run your thumbnail across the edges so you get a really good bond between the tape and the paper. If you don't, uh, the watercolor, the water is going to creep under the tape and you're going to have some ugly little jagged edges. <clears throat> Not that that's that critical on this assignment, but if you're masking off uh, the edge of a, of a geometric surface, uh, say a roof or some other building or a skyline, horizon line, you may not want those jagged edges. Um, I have found that Scotch Magic Tape, that translucent uh, looking uh, Scotch brand tape uh, called Magic Tape, works about as good as a good quality masking tape does. <coughs> well, so you're going to divide your sheet off and you will see that there are four rectangles by four rectangles. That means there are 16 spaces that you're going to fill up on each side. So you have 32 textures that you are going to create. 
I call these uh, my, a non-representational textures or non-objective textures. That is, they're, you're not doing little paintings of landscapes or people or objects. Get that out of your mind completely. These, uh, this assignment is just it's really just having fun with this medium, learning how it behaves, getting used to your brushes and the water pigment ratio and the paper, and uh, what happens if you paint wet into wet? What happens if you scrape into a wet surface? What happens if you scrape into a dry surface? What happens if you run your brush uh, quickly over a surface? or drag your brush sideways, or a round brush roll it. Uh, there are so many different things that you can do that get different effects. But I do want the traditional ones, uh, most of the traditional ones. And what I want you to do is mask it off, paint these, but take notes on your tape about what it is you did, and then when you pull the tape off and you have these nice clean white borders right into there, uh, this one was glazing. Well, sort of. It's not a particularly good example of glazing because <clears throat> there's no transparency evident. Variegated wash. Uh, wax resist. There is some, they use some wax on this. Uh, here, uh, this was a masking, a misket type of fluid she used. Here, uh, she scraped out on it from a dry surface. Here, she tried to do a solid flat wash. Uh, so label what you did uh, so you can kind of remember uh, what the texture was you were going for. This is salt dropped into a surface. It would have worked better if, if uh, it would have been a darker color, but the salt technique, using kosher salt in that case. Um, so fill the page, both sides, uh, with just textures. You do the traditional ones. Uh, and then, uh, you know, dripping and back runs. And here's an excellent example of, of uh, glazing. She labeled this hard versus soft edge. Well, yes, she's got some wet on wet stuff going on here. Hard edge where she painted over a dry surface over here. But it is an excellent example of glazing because she has these transparent layers being created uh, where the paint is going over another layer. More often than not, the first layer has to be dry for that to work. Uh, so anyway, that's what you're going to do. You're going to fill a page front and back with just pure texture. Not textures of objects, but just pure technique uh, to get comfortable with this medium. That's the first assignment. Now, I did want to show you this one because uh, this this student, uh, by the way, uh, who was this? <clears throat> this was Jessica Reeves. Very analytic approach. She did a really nice job. Did a lot of nice craftsmanship in this, but she really uh, went through a lot of different traditional and then just experimental things. I want to share another one with you <clears throat> that... Um, isn't as exciting dynamically. What's the difference between these two? Well, the difference is the, the pigments are weak in this. The water pigment ratio, and I'm not talking about the brightness of it, the chroma. I'm talking about the amount of pigment in the water. Whether it's dark or bright uh, is not as relevant as pigment strength. And remember, with watercolor, you're always painting a uh, transparent medium. You're painting with the viscosity of water, not cream. If you put enough pigment in the water that it becomes creamy, it may just chip off, fall off of the paper when it dries. It probably will. Watercolor is designed to soak into the surface of the paper, to stain the paper. It is not designed like acrylic or gouache where you paint with a cream. So you're, you always want that water viscosity, bar, water consistency, but you can put a, a lot stronger pigment to water ratio, a uh, higher amount of pigment to get stronger colors. The colors are very weak in this one. She labeled it this way, which is fine, doesn't matter. Uh, wet on dry, wet on wet, flat wash, graded wash, variegated wash, blending with soft edges, blending with hard edges, 
back runs, uh, just pure glazing, lift out with a paper towel, uh, your kosher salt. Here's you with doing little designs. Uh, I don't want you to be worried about designing, uh, creating designs here, just pure texture. So why did I say this is a, a little weaker? Well, actually, uh, this particular student, her personal voice was muted watercolor. And uh, it, she really did it well uh, with weaker colors. This is Cecilia Nutt, CC. And um, she's, she's very good at what she does. She, she did very well in the watercolor class. On this particular assignment, this side is a little more visually dynamic than this side. And I think I probably, when I saw her working on this, I probably said, hey, put a little more pigment in that water. Let's get a little more visual strength. And it was like pulling teeth to get her to add the pigment to the water. So that's just a reflection of her, her personal style. And I don't want to... Uh, try to tell you what your personal style ought to be. So I backed off of, t of trying to push her to have strong color. Not bright, just strong. Uh, because that's not her. That's not the way she painted. Uh, but on this particular assignment, she probably didn't get as many points for this. And this is not a big point assignment. Uh, as this student did with a little stronger color. But both of those are really excellent examples of that assignment. So let's go to the second assignment. And with this assignment, uh, again, you are dividing your page off. Uh, do I? By the way, Sarah Walker in this case uh, actually used the backside of this assignment to do another assignment later which you can do, you can do two paintings, uh, one on each side, and save watercolor paper. Uh, the problem is, what if you end up with two paintings and you, and you like them both? You might have to envision some way to mat and frame them and protect them under glass and something that you can flip over and see both sides of it. So here's Sarah's textures. Yeah, a very creative approach to this here. Now, um, this is an object. Uh, and that's really not what I'm wanting you to concentrate on, is painting objects. I want you to paint texture. Uh, and she's done a really nice job here on this pine cone. It's recognizable, yes, but it's really about the texture of the pine cone. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm wanting you to do. Now notice there are four by three. There's only 12 total on the page. Uh, she actually had a little extra space here on the side uh, to put her name. That may or may not be the case, depending on how you space out your borders. Uh, but uh, it's a good job. It's visually dynamic. You can tell right up front that the, uh, she's going to do well uh, with this medium. It's kind of a natural with the watercolor. Uh, this one is a little better example of the assignment. Rebecca Hanthorn. Hanthorn. Um, <clears throat> this is the emphasis here is really on texture. Now, in this case, she shows us enough of the shoe that we we see we know it's a shoe. If she had zoomed in to just uh, you know a few square inches, then you, you you may lose enough of the concept of what it is for the texture to to speak. Uh, here's a jar, and it's zoomed in enough that it really emphasis is on the light and shadow, the reflections. A uh, bit of a tree stump, the texture, uh, green woven fabric, uh, a leaf. Uh, it's about texture. And so where the first assignment is just the material, just learning how to use watercolor. This one is learning how to use water to simulate actual textures. So it's naturalistic or realistic art, but uh, it's sort of abstract because we're zooming in enough to, to concentrate on the textural quality. This assignment comes the closest to uh, breaking one of my rules, the personal rules I have in the class, and that is I, I do not want uh, to suggest to you that any one style is how you should go. 
the watercolorist watercolor. I will make references uh, like that in class. Uh, the Winslow Homers or the John Pikes. Uh, there are a number of very famous watercolorists and there's a certain wet on wet free spontaneous look that they have. And that's fine. Uh, but there's also some very successful artists who are photoreal or completely abstract. <clears throat> and I want you to, to, to develop your personal voice. This one kind of forces you to be a realist, but it does, but there's a lot of latitude in that. Uh, for instance, let me pick up another one here. Um, let's go to this one. Uh, skip over uh, to Larissa Amlin. Uh, Larissa had uh, a very whimsical approach. She was not a realist. It still is not a realist. Uh, but she's doing quite well marketing her artwork uh, with uh, whimsical themes and, and style. She struggled a bit with watercolor class because so much of what we do is realism, but you don't have to be a photorealist or even a naturalistic realist. You can be impressionistic, expressionistic, uh, abstracted, whimsical. I think she did a wonderful job with this texture assignment uh, with the style that she works in naturally. She's making a stab at cloth and here's a, a twig with its cast shadow, uh, a, a leaf, uh, some kind of a blossom, uh, a piece of cloth. Uh, a, it doesn't have to be extremely photorealistic. And if you lean towards realism, then, then do it. Uh, try to be realistic. <clears throat> Here's one where the textures are much more literal. This is Lauren Harris, uh, and uh, excellent uh, young artist. And uh, watercolor came natural for her, and she's really nailed uh, these textures. This old leather shoe, I mean, you can almost smell the leather. A ceramic glaze, a little more freedom with this, uh, with the wet on wets. Uh, a seashell, pretty abstract, but the texture is, is captured. Uh, reflections of metal. Uh, this edge of an apple with highlights and shadows, but trying to capture that texture. Uh, so anyway, uh, Enjoy this. Have fun with it. Let your own uh, style start developing even as early as these. So you're going to end up with um, with nine of these. Uh, actually, there were nine. There were nine here. There were nine here. And um, yeah, they all have nine. And so that those are your first two assignments. And um, so, point that camera so you're seeing more than just my hands and my belt buckle. Um, these assignments are meant to introduce you to the medium of watercolor. And some of you have probably painted a lot with this medium. It's relatively new for others. So these two assignments are designed to, uh, to just jump in and start painting and to uh, get familiar with your paper, your medium, that water pigment ratio, your brushes. And I want you to have fun with this assignment. And uh, the, the pure texture, non-representational texture, uh, and, and the realistic texture are more limited in point value than the later assignments are. But enjoy them. Just enjoy them. Start painting.